Hi everyone, I'm your host Emma Burgage. And I'm your co-host Jose Camacho. Whether you're a player or a coach, or you're just passionate about what you do and you want to be the best at it, this is the amazing podcast for you. Today's episode is sponsored by Matchset. Matchset is an amazing company that provides players with incredible equipment and apparel. With Matchset, equipment does matter and they make sure it won't slow you down. Use code Tennis with Emma to get 10% of Match Tennis today. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast. Today is a special day for me because I have my coach here with us, Sergio Martinez. See, yeah, yeah, I said that correctly. Here he is, finally. Uh, we made it work with his busy schedule. So he's from Spain. You're going to notice some um, language difficulties today. Accent, accent for sure. <laughs> um, he, he's been coaching for the last like almost 20 years. He moved to America from Spain when in two, uh, 2011. He's worked in different academies until in 2017 he built his own academy. Right now he's running at Tennis Masters. Um, he worked with some WTA players and that's how I met him because when I was on tour I was training with some of his players. And then we reconnected again a few months ago. I just went there to play. And then we're like, let's try, let's try see if this is gonna work. And here we are, two, three months later. I don't know how long yeah, it's actually, been. I, I don't even too. know. It's it's been a while. I know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, welcome, Sergio. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. Um, so I want the audience to get to know you a little bit better, and me too, because I don't know your full story. Mm -hmm. um, so where are you from? Um, how come you came to America and just your like playing career and coaching career? Yeah, uh, I'm from Spain. My name is Sergio. Uh, I played tennis since I was maybe 10, 11 years old. I started kind of late. But that's late, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I started improving really quick and, and playing and uh, playing tournaments, uh, competing. When I was like 15, 16, I decided to, to try to play pro. So I start playing some futures and then I broke my arm, my left arm that uh, that completely me, stopped me from from playing and from trying to be professional. And actually, uh, there is where I start kind of teaching at that age. I was still playing some national tournaments to make money teaching. So kind of still with the tennis by but, but I start to realize that uh, teaching was something that I really really liked so I, I started to teach when I was 18 in Spain and then I had a Spanish friend that he he was here in America and he asked me Sergio come and visit me and that was 2011 2012 visit me and see how it is here and and I came and actually it was really good from the beginning. I start to, to really like the, the facilities that uh, it was here. I, I was in Bradenton, which is near near the Academy of Volitieri, mm -hmm. that for sure everybody knows. But we were not inside, we were outside. We had our uh, own Spanish academy there, a small one. And then a lot of players came to us uh, from Volitieri and also in that in the area of Bradenton where like a lot of like professional players. So it was really, really uh, fun because as soon as I came from, as soon as I came from Spain, I started to work with them. And I start to see the, the possibilities that uh, America could give you uh, in terms of like, as I said, facilities, a lot of players. And I remember in the beginning, I start like, um, traveling with one guy like she was around 200 in the world and then I when I, I said wow I really like to coach and to travel with the player and, and to help in this level you know so I was involved in that academy and, and with players until 2015 that I went back to Spain I had one year on my own there with some players actually one girl moved with me uh, and then I, I had like players from Spain and I stayed one year, but uh, Spain is in a small country like uh, 
it was hard to make your own thing there and I could see that. So then I had a chance to go back to the area of West Palm Beach. Uh, that was 2016. And yes, yeah, since there, I mean, in the area of the West Palm Beach and, and I really like it there. And I'm planning to stay there for a long time if everything goes well. I started my, my own academy in 2018 there. And since I started with like two, three players, right now we are around 50. So I think it's been good. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, every time I remember even when I was playing like um, before, like six, seven years ago, it was always like, oh, there's this Sergio guy, you know, <laughs> it, up north. You know, you yeah. have everyone like in Boca area, Delray area, but then like up north, oh, there's this Sergio. Who is this Sergio guy, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how you built, you know, from nothing. 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 I, I mean, it's not that my English is perfect now. <laughs> I know that. But back then... I didn't know how oh to say God. nothing. It was, hi, how are you? And barely That's anything crazy. else. That's yeah. crazy. So how, you just learned English just by yeah. living here? by being with players. Wow. So that's another thing that tennis helped me. So I mean, I'm going to keep helping you. Yeah, please. Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> no, but that's that's impressive. But you, you can see the love for the game that you have and you're constantly I feel like you're trying to get better as a coach and as a person and I feel like that's why you're successful in what you do don't you that's what from a few months that we've been working together mm -hmm. that's what I see in you one of the things when I came to America actually it was that that they had the facilities they had the players but I don't know when I was seeing the people coaching or working for me, it was like, what is the passion there? Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't know, when, when you decide to do something, I feel like you need to like what you do. And me personally, I really like what to do, what I do. So that's something that in the beginning, when, when, I, when I arrived here, I saw great level, but some people like not with, with the passion in terms of coaching. I don't know, it was like different. Maybe because also, like, as I said, the Spain is like a small country and like everybody push each other and, mm. and is this like, uh, sometimes not, not healthy, but most of the time is a healthy competition. And that's something that here in America, I didn't see it uh, back then in the beginning, you know, it was like everybody's kind of cold or like they work, but they don't work with the passion. And that's something that for me, I, I try to, to tell to my player that that's not uh, negotiable. You need to have that. And as a coach as well, uh, my coaches and I, I think we are always trying to, to be passionate and, and with intensity because I feel like this sport, it's a lot about that, a lot of technique or a lot of like, Sometimes you see drills and people that um, is trying to find the right forehand, backhand serve. Yeah, which is great. But the passion and intensity has to be there. For me, like first or two ingredients, the, the, the first ones are those ones. You that was actually ask. one of the questions that I had. It's what's the one piece of advice you'd give someone starting out in your career? And you kind of answer this with what you're saying is to have that passion and that's honestly I think that's why I connected with you a lot because those are the things that I always tell to my coaches too because I'm like you don't have to be an amazing player yeah. you don't have to be an amazing coach knowing every detail of technique but you need to have that energy that passion you need to connect with people mm -hmm. because if you don't have that you know person from on the other side feels that feels that you know if you're just there for the time to go by if you're 100%. looking at the time oh my god what time is it is it time to go oh my god five more minutes okay we're done you know so i mean yes we get burnt out as coaches and especially here in florida we yeah. you know but it's important really to somebody said this one time to me it's like it's not about you it's about the player yeah right 
It's about the player and how you're gonna make them feel. What the player needs. Yes. You know, and the player needs energy, then the player needs knowledge, but the player needs to feel like you are over there with passion and wanted to help. They feel that. And yeah. I, in the beginning, my English was super poor, but I was like full booked all my day. And I, and then when I went back, when I went back home, I was like, but how is it possible? Like I'm, I'm sometimes it's hard for me to explain the drills, the technique, but then in the other side, uh, people say, can, people came to me and say, oh, thank you. Your energy is great. I love the way like you, you teach. And I'm like, I'm just basically like putting what I have. And right now what I have, it was the energy and the passion for the sport and, and trying to communicate in my way, like my knowledge. But back then, honestly, I didn't have comparing with what I have right now. I didn't have much, yeah. but I could see like many coaches when they get old or, or, or they get older because like maybe it's like a lot of years or they have bad experiences with with the with the players they start to lose this and that's something that myself i never want to lose because if i did good or if i'm doing good is because every day i i try to go to the core and and bring the energy bring bring everything all the ingredients necessary to have like a good lesson or like to try to help players to achieve their dreams mm -hmm. goals so i think we have to bring that as a coaches yeah we do um but what no. do you think now don't say we do because you are player so you cannot talk as a coach <laughs> i'm still coaching yeah yeah you do I, until i start yeah. really playing because I agree. i've been practicing but until I actually start playing, we'll I'm, get there. I'm still a coach. We'll get there. Um, hopefully, very soon. Yeah. yeah, not hopefully, but it's gonna happen very soon. But, and I feel like I'll ho always have that in me, like that. I mean, I've been coaching last seven years, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I don't know. I can't just not be a coach, you know, eh, yeah. unless I'm, I start. Yeah, yeah. Well, it yeah, will be. It yeah. will be there always. Yeah. But right now. And this is something that we spoke. I feel like your energy and your focus should go to the player, player area. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah. I mean, you can you can say it. You yeah. can give me a speech again. It's fine. We we spoke about that, yeah. and I think uh, you'll see it also, and you are seeing that mm -hmm. that is important. I mean, you are putting like a lot of work. It's not a yeah. joke what you are doing. Uh, I see you every day there on time as well with the energy with the with the focus and and trying your best and and that shows me and show you for sure that you want that yeah and, and that's very important i feel and little by little as soon as is what i told you as soon as you you start competing i feel like you're gonna go more on the on the player way because there's it, no gonna be other yeah. way yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean because now it's like i've been really taking care of my body more as you know and you know really really focusing on that and taking some time when i have the time to mm -hmm. stretch to do these things whereas when i just started practicing every little time that i had i would be coaching yeah. right now i do maximum hour a day yeah Ma maximum like this week like i i mean i just booked one less hitting easy lesson yesterday i had one the day before i had mm -hmm. one that's, that's gonna Th pay that's you off. It. But that's gonna pay you off. That's time that you are investing in yourself as a it player. It, it, it is will. because this is the career path that I chose now, mm -hmm. right? And I can always go back to coaching. Always. Right? And I can always be booked out all day. I know. Every day. That's what I told you is I think like if you play now after you you can go back and even you're gonna be more knowledge, you're yeah. gonna be even even better. Yeah, more ready to to teach also if you want. Yeah, exactly. I'm learning a lot from you too. Uh, I'm taking some of your drills yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, I am really yeah. like a lot of things. You know, I can implement mm -hmm. here and there. It, I mean, we can learn of course. from each other and 100%. get some tips. I mean, you have your style, I have my style, but you know, uh, it helps. Mm -hmm. um, but I was gonna ask you earlier. Uh, we were talking about like the burnout and the hours and everything. 
how do you balance out like all the hours that you have on court, right? And like, okay, we talked about you like to nap, right? In yeah, between. <laughs> that's uh, super important for me. And you also said one time when we spoke, like, I don't care who asks me on Sunday how much they're gonna pay me, I'm not gonna. Is that really true, or you I, kind I, of like? Did, when did you start doing that? Uh, I worked many Sundays. I'm not gonna lie, I worked weeks without stop, but then it got a point that you also see like you're getting super tired. And I feel like when you start to see that you lose quality in terms of like health, in terms of like teaching, or like you are super extremely tired for your social life, that's a moment that you have to say uh, what's happening. And then you see, uh, I remember in the beginning when I started my academy, I was working a lot like Saturdays, Sundays, Monday through Friday, a lot of hours. And then I start to get more busy. So then I could like say, okay, maybe not on Sundays. And I always respect that work, that work for me. Mm, the, the break on the middle of the day. That's something that it works for me a lot. I, I don't mind to wake up early. As you know, we start many days at 7 a.m. And I'm there until 12.30, many days, 12, 12.30, which is like five hours, five hours, 30. And I'm there like working full way, okay? So then of course, after that I'm tired. And now in summer, it's like very, very hot. It's not a joke to be teaching in Florida in summer, okay? So then I have to go back. I'll, I'll try to eat properly. And then I have one or two hours, even if I'm not sleeping, I have to be like very, very calm. Mm -hmm with myself, uh, if I can in a dark room, it's it's really convenient. And, and with the AC, that's super important. Because after in the afternoon, I work as well. I start usually like at 4 p.m. until 7, or even like some days we did until 8, which is a lot. So in summer to do like eight, nine hours, is not easy. So that's why the, the break in the, middle, in the middle of the day, for me is crucial. No matter, I mean, maybe if we have one thing that is very, very important, I, I have to go. Like today, for example, yeah. I had a meeting with my my partners from Tennis Masters and then we, we I came to do this, so I'm good. Yeah. But my my way, it works like this, having a little break in the middle of the day and in the weekend I work Saturday morning and then I try to rest in the afternoon and Sunday as well. Yeah. That's That's my schedule and what it works for me. And then in your, like, do you usually like prepare for the last, like, or like with the other coaches, do, do they already like know what they're doing? Or you like kind of like tell them what to do? Are you the one that's organizing all the schedules? Because then it's a lot, like even when you have a lot of time, because I know it, like you're constantly, right? Organizing lessons, doing things. I do, but it get a point with my coaches that I have right now, that uh, let's say I plan the, the practice on drills, I don't know, two specific things, uh, coming back and forth and uh, finishing points. So I have like a little talk to them. Uh, we're gonna work that today. And they already know me, what I, what I, what I want. And, yeah. and actually I have a lot of trust on them already. It's not like they've been with me for like a month or two. I have coaches that they've been they've been with uh, they've been with me for like one two three years, so that gives me also like a confidence, and and I believe on them on their work. So I prepare, but I'm I I like when they take the initiative on when I say we're gonna work in this concept, they build drills around this concept. Unless I want something very specific, mm -hmm. okay. So I, I work in that way and, and this is how I like it because also I don't like to cut them. I like them to feel free and, and tell their things. I feel like that's important for me as well. So I'm kind of more like, I like to guide, but not to say what to do exactly. In terms uh, from players that I work with, like can be your case, yes. On that, no one say what I have to do because 
I, I like to follow my way and, and I like to prepare as well my practices on what I think is important for you. I like to hear people talking always. And if they, I mean, you know, we've been doing drills that maybe another coach suggests, hey, I see that that works and, and I don't have a problem of doing this, mm -hmm. but I do my way on that. So I kind of work. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been, I mean, in this business for a long time yeah. that you kind of like, yeah. I feel like it's coming very natural to yeah. you. Like when, to when I have like a private players or players that they say, I want to achieve, I don't know, like a good division one college and I want to work with you. There I do a full schedule of what I want to work mm. in every practice. And, and I follow that very strict, as you see. And as I told you, sometimes you get mad at me when I told you, okay, we're going to do this. And you tell me again and say, yes, we need a little bit more time doing that. So this is more the way that I work privately with the groups. I work more on concepts and I let my coaches to, to also to, to put some drills by themselves on that. And that everyone has their own style mm -hmm. too. So I can play a set tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening this week. No, because like you just okay. start playing points yesterday <laughs> and today and, yeah. and it's been really good. Not perfect, but already like a great progress. And we can see you start to move quite quite a bit. Uh, but for set, no, not yet. <laughs> Maybe next week at the end. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But then you're leading. Yeah, I'm leading I'm for two weeks cry. to stay. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how you didn't even tell me. You're like just sitting there. My, my life, Emma, <laughs> it's always like a little bit. So you plan your trip to Spain last minute? No, I had it planned, but... Um, you know my problem until I don't have everything set up. Yeah. I'm not saying okay, I'm going because you yeah, yeah that makes sense. I can change plans yeah. two or three days earlier yeah. until I know for sure everything is going. Uh, I was waiting for one player to confirm because I have three players coming coming with me. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Was and I was waiting. Wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened very quick, okay. and and maybe the next year, if you are healthy, I think it's a great period to to be playing tournaments in Europe. Oh yeah, for Actually, sure. Actually, there's no, some in Spain. I saw right no now. No joke. I feel like in in summertime, ITF tournaments, like a, a great professional tournaments, are are in Europe. So maybe next year, if we are doing good. Uh, I mean, next year, if we're doing good, we're going to be French Open. Next no, by year. this time, it's Wimbledon. So. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, you know that Spain has, like, a really special place in my heart. You know, that's kind of like where I love my coaches there. I love the energy. You know, I won my th first tournament there. It kind of like, you know, I don't know. I love Spain, but I don't know if I could live there. I really like it here. Like, I don't know about you. Yes, I do miss home. I miss food. I miss my family. But like, I got so used to here, to the to the life here, right? And and obviously, you're, you built your business and I built my life here. And, and it's kind of, I don't know. I like living here now. People ask me sometimes, I don't know about you, like, oh, you yeah, know, do you, would you live in Europe? Would you go back? As, as everything has pros and cons, what I like from here is like we have the whole year great weather mm. in our business. As I said, like we have great facilities, uh, a lot of tournaments for the kids. I mean, what you have here in terms of like tennis, tournaments, facilities, you just can go anywhere and play a tournament, uh, you move a little bit, you have a great uh, academies, great players. So America gives you a lot of that. But what I miss from Spain is the culture a little bit. They, they, uh, I feel like they enjoy a lot the life there. While we work here a lot, and sometimes we forget a little bit about uh, to enjoy. Yeah, I feel like to find the balance and, and also in our work and, and sport, a lot of people, as you see, practice, kids, parents, they come, they come super stressed. Yeah. And and that's not something that is going to be positive for, for the players yeah. or for all the parents putting that pressure on, on, on their kids. While I think back in Spain, 
my generation and older generations, it was very, very natural that we were competing to each other, but we were friends at the same time, most of the times. Of course, maybe you had one enemy here and there, but as I remember the big picture, it was friends. Uh, my, my parents were friends with the parents of, the, of, of another players that I was competing with. Mm. Every, everything was way more organic, and I feel like you developed there a great way of competing. You just compete on the court and, and you relax outside of the court. And I feel like that's something that here, as I said, like they enjoy life. Now, honestly, it's been 13 years. I'm not there, so maybe I lost track in perspective. But I'm telling you about uh, how I grew up yeah. and how I see like a great players that they still playing right now on the on the professional tour, how they grew up. It was very, very natural, very uh, healthy, like we were like competing, but in the right way. I didn't I don't remember parents putting pressure in kids. Oh, when you lost your dad or your mom was like really, really rough on you. I don't remember that. Well, I, I remember my dad was. Okay. <laughs> uh, not mine. Yeah, okay. They always support me unless I was like maybe bad behaving okay. or saying like a bad word that they, they would correct me. And as I remember, uh, my partners, players, friends that they were playing tennis too, I remember the parents were really like... Really? Yeah. And in a maybe high level... It's huh? Maybe it's Spain because in my country, no... Wow, that, like that, really that, harsh. Yeah. yeah, it's a different country. <laughs> it but, is. But it I is. feel like that's one of the things that why Spain uh, brought a lot of players. Yeah. The, the, the way like they grow in the sport, it was very healthy and natural. And I feel when you try to push too much, sometimes you, you break that. Yeah. And that's very, it's a lot of pressure sometimes. The kids, you can see like a lot of pressure from the parents and at the end they put a lot of pressure on themselves too. Yeah. And, and I feel like sometimes that's negative. Oh, for sure. For not sure. sometimes, but most of the times mm. it's negative. And not just for tennis, but also for life. Yeah. You know? Um, okay. Let's, okay. I wanted to ask you about, you said you coached some WTA players. What, why haven't you coached any ATP players or have you? As or you kind of like just picked no, more females? The, the ranking, in terms of rankings was always like WTA, always a uh, woman. Okay. I, I laugh because I said that. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, good. I learned. <laughs> uh, why? Because I, as I said, when I came, I started with one of them and then she was like 108 in the world and we start to work together. She become like top 100. That was the first one that uh, that I work in, in, and she break the top 100. And I was like, already once that you, I feel like once that you enter in that circuit, then you connect also with with more players. Why circuit, circuit. circuit. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what did I say now? <laughs> circuit. Okay, good. You've like, been doing really yeah, good. And, and and I don't know, like I start with with her, then and then just kind yeah, of then yeah. Then I kind of continue working always with uh, with women. Yeah. And then uh, and then in your academy, it's mostly just like, is it high performance? Would you say or kind of like a mix? Um, like who would come to your academy? We have all the programs since like beginners today, uh, they are doing lessons from four years old right now at 4 p.m. We have an adults starting in the morning that you saw this morning. Yes, yeah. But I would say the main uh, number is like ki kids that they want to compete. Okay. So we have beginners, intermediums, but the bigger group is uh, kids that they play tournaments in a, in a weekly basis. We have some kids that they, they want to play ITFs and they are playing ITFs. And we have kids that they want to achieve the dream of playing like a good Division pro. One college and pro. Yeah. So I think we go more for, for like a high performance. That, that would be the, the bigger number. But as well, we have like a beginner kids starting and, and adults as well. 
that we we have fun teaching them too. Um, so what? Now some interesting questions. Mm -hmm. So what do you? What separates, in your opinion? Obviously. Yeah, for sure. Um, Everything that they said is my opinion. <laughs> I hope so. Hundred <laughs> percent. So what separates, um, like talking about your junior players, right? Mm -hmm. 18 and under. What separates the one that make it, that go to college and compete and do good, and the ones that don't make it? What would you think? What are like? I feel ones? like when when I sp when I speak with them, uh, a lot of a lot of them they tell me I want to play college, I want to play pro, mm -hmm. okay, which is great. But then when you go to the court and then you you need to practice, you need to to bring your energy, you bring uh, your intensity. When you tire, you have to keep competing, the mental part. The ones like they can stay uh, longer on those areas like intensity, commitment, uh, well-prepared, stretching, practicing with like uh, high intensity all the time. And actually, the ones like they follow the instructions are the ones, in my opinion, the ones that they can be more success. What I'm saying by that, you can tell, and, and we work we work with you, I, I'm gonna put just an example. We, I can ask you, okay, Emma, prepare the forehand like this, and, and we can see, oh, it's going much better, okay? But in, in five minutes, you play points, and you are not preparing the forehand like that, that's already something that for me separates the ones like, they're gonna be success with the ones like they are not. The ones like they are uh, the ones like they are able to follow the instructions and execute them constantly. Like they learn super quick. I feel like that's one of the, the difference. Okay, so basically you're saying that I can't follow instruction. No, no, no. <laughs> I said I put just an example, but I didn't say like you were not one of those. <laughs> You, you won't catch me, you're trying. I'm but, trying, yeah, yeah. I'm trying, For but basically that's what I got out of it. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I feel that that's, for me, that's crucial. You yeah. tell them something, they do it. They execute, they know wow. like too many you, questions, you, you, no you doubts. You see like, wow, how much this, this girl or this boy is gonna learn. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, what would you say the WTA players, okay? Um, okay, we have three things, mental performance, mental strength, physical, and like technical or like strategical. So like out of these three, how would you rank them of like, what's the most important for a female player going on tour? When they have already like a certain level, no? We're yes, 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 yes. Okay, if you're talking me, about me. Okay, for me, it's just one ingredient that I see that this is the difference when they are in confidence. Mm -hmm. I feel, and while I work with them, and I saw like, okay, this girl right now feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, they go and they can break anybody. But when they feel tight, or when they don't feel it, like they don't have this confidence, I saw a big breakdown there. So uh -huh. I feel like confidence in, in in woman in WTA is like major thing. Wow. Major. Good. I have to work on my confidence. Yeah. No, but I, I can see that because sometimes you know you're like you're training so well, you're doing yeah. so good, but then you're like you're always doubting yourself, right? You're always like you're, or you're giving too much respect to the player across oh well she's better or something, right? I feel like um you already can have like a good junior like 15 16 years old that if she believes that she can be like a top 20 and if she believes that then the top 20 is feeling a little tight that much oh, yeah. yeah and it happens many times yeah yeah is it much better the 15 years old than the top 20 i don't think so yeah but i feel like the confidence plays like a big role there yeah well good um do you think for somebody that wants to go pro, college is a good option? Yes. Yes. And, and every time, Why? more. 
When I broke my arm, I remember I had an offer from one division, one school. Back then, um, I didn't see it as a good option. No many good players could go to college. So I said no. Mm. And then little by little, I saw people coming here and, and every time better players were coming to college. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the college is, it, it grows a lot. It grow a lot the last past five, 10 years. And I feel like it's gonna keep growing. Mm -hmm. More players are gonna go. And I feel like when you have like a better players, the competition gets better. Mm. And at some point, the way like they gonna practice there is gonna be better. I feel um, sometimes I speak a lot with uh, with guys that or girls that they they go to college. They are not too happy of, of how they train there. But I feel like that's something that you can change and get better at that. So if you have the competition, if you have the level, and eventually you can bring as well like the good quality trainings, those years can can be really really good for your development, as well can can. Uh, help you in terms of like not spending money and and eventually helping you with a sponsor after that you're gonna be more mature and hopefully you already kind of set up with the studies that you feel i have a backup in case i don't play good so i feel is a great great uh exit yeah i i i think it's super good and now to my players, the one they come to my academy, I always like advise them to go through college unless you are yeah. Carlos Alcaraz and, and with 15 you have 80 points, then this is different. But for the 95, 96, 97%, they should go to college. That's my opinion. Good, good. Maybe, maybe you can say but something it's okay. about it's, that. It's not about my opinion okay. here, it's about your opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, great, great. I mean, I could talk about this all, all mm -hmm. day, but I'm not. Um, what do you think, how many hours should junior between 12 and 16 practice? The ones that are playing tournaments, the ones that want to go to Division One school, like... Does it depend on a player? Like how much fitness? How much is cardio important? So what do you think? Um, yeah, based on your experience. I think you should have like a, like a plan in terms of hours. You can say like two and a half, three, three and a half. I would never go in that period more than four hours or get into four hours. I feel like that's a lot. Uh, I feel like if you practice with like a high intensity, with a good quality, two, three, if you get there, that's more than enough. I feel it's very important right now as well, what you do outside of the core in terms of stretching, physical therapy, uh, fitness. Fitness, that doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym and build weights like, like crazy. I mean, I introduced you to one of the fitness uh, coaches that I know and I think you see how these days the fitness goes. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you start to introducing that in a in an early age, you're gonna start building your, your body strong with a good flexibility and, and uh, pre with a prevention of, of the injuries, which is very important. Uh, I would go two, three hours tennis and putting like one hour in in those areas that i said like can be fitness can mm -hmm. be recovery all this it, it has to go uh, in my opinion together but never saying like okay you're gonna train four hours or three hours always like kind of adjusting and adapting uh, of depending of the player that you to have the player yeah. yeah yeah i feel like that's that's key too maybe you need three hours yeah maybe i need four or maybe yeah. i need two yeah so it depends yeah but how, what do you think, this is just so random, I'm just curious, mm -hmm. how important is to do cardio off the court? What means cardio for you, running? Bike, running, um, rowing, elliptical, I don't know. Should be, in my opinion, orientated uh, to the player. Okay, maybe the player, you see it like, is it slow in a short distance, but can last like three hours mm -hmm. running side to side. 
then you work more like in explosive uh, runnings yeah, and totally. in so I feel like you have to to adjust and see the player yeah I don't like to say okay it's very important to do 30 minutes running 30 minutes elliptical that's very yeah. generic and yeah. that that that's not working for everybody okay so it's important yes but you need to know the player and adapting those runnings and this cardio for the player yeah that's I feel like that's very important um do you read books yeah oh really now in summer honestly no I don't want to <laughs> lie but uh, I like to read uh quite often or listen to audiobooks give me I, I, one or two or three maximum books that you would I, I have recommend. to say it in, I read them in Spanish oh god yeah. of course you should read in English maybe you know, so yeah. your English gets better. Actually, I got the 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 winner of the mental part. I got that one this this year, and I I read it. It's very interesting. What's the name? You if I look at the yes, phone, you can look the winner, <laughs> the inner game of tennis. Oh, the inner game yes, of tennis. That's a good one. Good. That's that's uh, going to tennis, but I like um, I like to read books that follows one philosophy that I, I'm very, um, very into it, which is, I don't know how to say that in English, which is the... Tell the, me in the, Spanish. La, la filosofía estoica. I don't know either. Estoica. <laughs> That's very, for me, is a big... No idea. Stoicism? No? Stoicism. Yeah. What is stoicism? Do you know? No. <laughs> Stoicism. I, I like a lot to read about that philosophy. You never hear about Seneca, no? Um, stoicism Seneca. meaning yeah. the endurance of pain or hardship without the display of feelings and without complaint. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. An ancient Greek school of philosophy. Um, okay, interesting. So it's yeah. basically enduring the pain and hardship without like complaining and without uh, I, expressing I, I really like to read a lot about that philosophy and i try to apply that on on my daily basis mm -hmm. and i feel like that people were very smart mm. i'm gonna look into that yeah um okay final thing i'm going to tell you like five things and you have to answer like quickly like mm -hmm. five seconds and we're gonna finish with this this is like so super easy okay. you have to pick one uh atp and one wta player so i say this and you have to name atp and wta okay. ready for only five things best forehand alcaraz wta <laughs> five seconds is best Sorry, you make me think <laughs> What R comes R to mind? Rivani, uh, Rubakina. Yeah. Faster. You have to be faster. Okay. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Best backhand. Djokovic. <laughs> Burgic. <laughs> Burgic has a great backhand, actually. Burgic has... Just try to help you out here. I, I just want to pick the, I don't know, because don't there is so many good ones. Just pick one. Don't overthink. I just want to say what I think. Say it. Sviate has a great backhand. Okay. Serve. Best serve. In terms of power or in terms of... Best life? serve. <laughs> Karlovic, that was like insane. Karlovic, so, yeah, yeah. Karlovic, and woman Lisiki, I liked. Really? Yeah, Sabine Lisiki had a great serve, and I played with her, and um, her serve really, really surprised me. Really? Yeah. Return of serve. Djokovic. 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 On that you cannot yes. go wrong. Yeah. In woman. Borgic. Borgic has a great <laughs> return. I always tell her. Uh, let's pick Burgic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And last one, mental toughness. Rafa. Okay. 
Mm, in women, I feel like it's Viatic follows yeah. a lot what were like kind of similar as Rafa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Oh, those were kind of tough. Yeah. Anyways, um, for everyone that wants to follow Sergio online and his academy, Tennis Master. Tennis Master, correct. On Instagram, right? On yeah, Facebook too, or no? No, we have a website and an Instagram, okay. no Facebook. They're just getting into the social yeah. media. Um, Emma is helping. Uh, yes, trying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so follow Sergio. And uh, thank you for being with us thank today. You. This was nice, right? Yeah, Easy. it was really nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll have you again with Jose maybe in a few yeah, months. Anytime. Yeah. I like Jose. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Today's episode is sponsored by Matchset. Mapset is an amazing company that provides players with incredible equipment and apparel. With Matchset, equipment does matter and they make sure it won't slow you down. Use code TENNISWITHEMMA to get 10% of Match Tennis today. Thank you so much for supporting and listening to our podcast. Make sure to follow us on social media. And be sure to listen to next week's episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast.